Hello and welcome to this edition of Immigrant News. I'm your host, Elvis Santana. In this show, we talk about the issues facing the immigrant community, resources, and the community leaders that are doing their part to address them. So today we have Alicia Cortez. Thank Hello. you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me here. So Alicia is a daycare worker and she's also an activist with the Cosecha Movement. Tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Alicia. Who is Alicia Cortez? Well, Alicia Cortez um, came to the United States when she was eight years old. So I came here when I was eight. I crossed the border, uh, like many people. I was undocumented for many years. And um, I went to the schools, um, and I felt, I felt the... Um, like the self-esteem or things like that that you that you feel because you're not from this country because you're not speaking the language because you're not understanding what's going on or your surroundings and um, so it was a little frustrated uh, but now um, I have my documents I'm a resident and but I can never forget where I come from or who's my community or who's my people or who's who's surrounding me because I do come from many from a family that has been um, hurt by deportation. Um, I do have five children, and uh, I was married for 20 years, and now my ex-husband, it's no longer here. He was deported, well, five years ago. Um, and that, I think that trigger into me, and that's why, you know, it's so important to me uh, for our voices to be heard and our stories to be heard. Now, those voices and those stories, uh, you, you come across a lot of those as a daycare worker, right? Yes. So what, what are you seeing these kids going through? What are they bringing to the daycare center from their home? We speak a lot. And one of the things that I hear is that they're a little scared when they talk. They talk to me because I'm Guatemalan. And we, 80% of our children in the daycare that I work in, it's Hispanic. It's almost Mexicans, Guatemalans, Salvadorians, Hondurians. We have a lot of population in there. So they know I speak Spanish, but they also know that I'm Guatemalan. So they they can talk to me about many things. And they talk to me about recently, well, when the president came in, our president that we have now, they came in the next day and they were worried. They were worried about their families. They were worried about their family being separated. The first thing that they came in, I remember that morning at 6 a.m., I come in and I sit down. And then right away they said, Miss Cortez, they said, Miss Cortez, so is my mom gonna be, get deported? Is my dad gonna get deported? What's gonna happen? And that really triggered me because this is five, six, seven year old children that should not be going through this. They should not worry about what's gonna happen to their parent. And that really hurt my heart. And I have it here and I cannot forget that day at six in the morning when they were so wary about their families. I mean, we talk about the innocence of children in the USA having to face with these fears and having to see their parents, obviously their parents yeah. are very much afraid. It's a very sad thing. Yeah, it it's a very sad thing. So what, what is the greatest need you feel that we have for those school age children to address these fears, to, to help them cope with the environment that unfortunately they're they're living in in this country uh, we need first i think we need more spanish speakers uh teachers or um daycare providers we need that kind of stuff we also need a um we need or our uh community undocumented community to be uh to have their documents that's that's a need <laughs> um right now we need driver licenses and as a a uh, member from Movimiento Cosecha, we're working on a campaign for licenses for all because we need that. Those are little, like the document, like the, the license that we need. It's so then we can move around so we can provide for our families. And that can make our children also feel more secure. Like my children, I drove without a license for many years and my children were always wary. Oh, they can live a normal life if the they parents... Don't, they do not. It's traumatized and it's not fair for a child to live like that. It's unfair. Um, they're kids. Like you just said, they're innocence. And they go through the trauma of, I can see the cop. Did you saw the cop? Just sit down. Just relax. Just like don't smile. Just, that kind of fear should not be, children should not be go through. Yeah. 
they don't they shouldn't have that and that's what they're going through and it needs to stop now there are several people um, out there in the community being active with helping with immigrant issues we have sony here who's very active as well with a lot of our immigrant communities here um have you heard of uh, the cosecha movement and, well, and thank you it's an honor to participate in this movement uh we uh, also are not just an immigrant from a specific country. You know, we, in my point of view, we're immigrant, we all immigrant in this world. You know, we don't really own uh, any specific country. We choose to live and be born in a specific country. And yes, uh, the Brazilian community is strongly supporting the Safe Community Act. And it's an honor to actually be part of this movement because it's very dear to me. As an immigrant from Brazil living in America, I chose to live here. I chose to be part and make my community stronger. Um, I came to America 20 years ago as a student and um, I went to college. I work as a nurse at the VA hospital for over 17 years. And we also, my husband and I created a business innovation center, which we try to build communities within communities. And I wanna thank Alicia for being a leader in the Cochera movement, Cosecha mm -hmm. movement. Um, it's an honor to wear their t-shirt. And I hope that everybody out there, which, uh, I also have uh, contact with a, a Brazilian community that's doing a great job in Boston um, on bringing awareness because America was designed in the motor, uh, automobile. There is nothing you can do without driving. I mean, in, in this state, in Massachusetts, 78% <laughs> uh, of the people here drive. Exactly. You know, it's, it's part of... How you get, I mean, it's the only way, it's not the only way, but it, it's it's the main way that most people get around specifically to work. Yeah, yeah. Now, in the Brazilian community, are you finding people that also have the same concerns as what's being addressed Absolutely. with Cosecha? Absolutely. Absolutely. As a business owner, uh, as a community organizer, I have seen not only Brazilians, but Portuguese, uh, uh, Angolan, uh, Cape Verdean, they all... all Within all those communities, we have immigrants that are here that are unable to drive. Um, and without driving, you cannot get groceries. You cannot get basics. Uh, the, the, the weather, you can't really walk long distance. Mobility is survival. Exactly. Yes. And what, an interesting thing, too, is here, Alicia is talking about the main groups of people that are demonized and have become the face of immigration, whereas a lot of people lose sight of the fact that immigrants come from absolutely anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's not just Central Americans. That yes. might be the current wave, mm -hmm. maybe in this particular part of the country, but that does not define what immigration is and where everyone is coming from. These issues affect people of all walks of life, yes. in many different countries that they, that they come from. Um, it's it's a lot of unfortunately it's a lot of the um, the politics and the culture mm -hmm. of fear things that that pit you know divide and control and and have people be against each other um, for political gain um, but I think that uh, what you guys are doing are in, in Cosecha is very very important can you talk a little bit more specifically about uh, what inroads Cosecha has made to advance this this agenda of uh, driver's licenses for the undocumented. Yes. Um, well, as Cosecha, we have done many actions. Uh, we we camp outside of the state house for three nights. We mm -hmm. had first a quinceañera, and that quinceañera, because um, quinceañera means 15. And 15 is 15 years of false promises that they have said that they were going to pass this bill, but they never do. So we did this in order to let them know that it's been 15 years that they keep thinking and thinking about it, and th yet they don't do anything. This is specifically in Massachusetts? Yeah, we did it at the state house. Because we have 14 other states, I believe the number is 14 yes, other states that have. The license, yeah. But they, Massachusetts has been dragging its feet. Yeah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, sorry, uh, 
the driving license, which is in Massachusetts, the act is um, Safe Communities Act. It has been uh, passed. We, we actually were able to, uh, for the first time in 15 years, that people were actually trying to pass uh, to have a driving license accepted or adopted in Massachusetts for non-documented. Um, and this time it passed the first stage. Now we have to educate and let people know that it's not over yet. Driving license still not legal for everybody. Um, uh, we have this, this window that's very important. Um, and I actually would love to have um, more help of the community utilizing this time if you allow me sure. to engage people to see if you guys can collaborate. You can see that it's a problem, not just for the people that are immigrants and that don't have documents. It's a general community problem. It's a sure. safety community problem because by legalizing driving license, you are, you are, allowing people that are here already driving to be legal and contribute even more because right. they have to drive anyway exactly you have to drive anyway it's a matter of survival like you said and uh, the state is going to collect revenues because they are going to be spending on paperwork you know driving license on with a driving license they're going to acquire uh, insurance you know, it's it's uh, it's a snowball of only great things. It's the beginning of a conversation. Well, I think that law is appropriately named. It is a community safety issue. It's it's. I feel safer knowing that everyone driving around me knows how to drive and is licensed to do so. Absolutely. So I think anyone can get behind this this initiative, regardless of how they feel with the immigration issues at hand. Mm -hmm. They should want everyone that's going to be driving anyway to be licensed to do it makes sense to me that's the whole goal and we have met with uh, state representatives at boston state house uh, they were very receptive um, i also would love to see the next stage we have until july july 7 july 7 for the last it's either a go or it's going to die there. So on that point, I want to ask Alicia, she was talking about all of the things that Cosecha is doing to drive attention, to put pressure on the legislators. What impact are those initiatives having? Like, are you seeing that the voice is being heard, that they are paying of attention? Of course, like um, some of our members from Cosecha, they just did a um, uh, hunger strike um, mm -hmm. that same day of, um, it was they were in the state house and uh, i actually have videos on facebook uh, and it got well and 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 the the bill um came out from the uh, transportation community i mean uh, transportation committee and um but that's what the power of the people that's because mm -hmm. they just put in that pressure like like i said we have done many marches we did a 25 mile march in four days we have um we have done many actions like we camp outside um we were delivering uh cakes um 15 cakes in memory of 15 mm -hmm. um years of off promises mm -hmm. and i the bigger thing i think it's the community is empowering the the community is understanding how much they're worth we are a community that, that contributes to this country are you saying the the people our, our community as um, undocumented community. And what about the community at large, the people not impacted by, wow. what, what level of support are you seeing? We have a lot. We have a lot of support. We have a lot of people that knows that what we're doing is correct. We have a lot of people that knows that what we're doing is justice and that they know who we are and they're backing us 100% on many things. As um, Movimiento Cosecha, we're a nonprofit organization. We get a lot of um, donations and and we're moving around because this is this whole team from many organizations yes. are coming together and say no no this is correct so i think that this is this is a really nice moment because we are 
we're connecting and mm. we are getting so much power because we're working yeah. in um, united. The the beauty and the good news is people are realizing that the people that are uh, immigrants and undocumented can be our neighbors, can be our kids' friends. And yes. if somebody is going to be deported, it's not just that person that's get, getting affected, being affected. It is the whole community because someone that was uh, responsible for a family, the whole family structure is of disrupted. Of so we're putting faces. We are... Uh, because the idea is we have to unite and see that I don't care where you come from. You deserve respect. You deserve to have basic things. Dignity. Dignity. Absolutely. Um, and don't judge somebody before you get to know them. We're all immigrants at the end of the day. And I also see an opportunity for your initiatives with the Brazilian community to interface with your initiatives with Cosecha and have support. Absolutely. One support the other. Together we're stronger. Strength in numbers. We we all have the same goals and uh, stronger together. And what's awesome is a lot of the, the senators, they were immigrants themselves. So, you know, what... It, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for, indeed? <laughs> so thank you very much, Alicia, thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Thank you Good luck having. in everything that you're doing. I think Osecha is doing an amazing job for Muchas the community. Gracias. That sounds great. Um, Sony, we were already a little bit aware of what you were doing, but to see the uh, similarities with <laughs> what's going pleasure. on here, I think there's an opportunity for further collaboration and to help the people in the community. So thank you both. Thank you. And to our audience, thank you very much for joining us uh, this edition. I think that we are going to do a future show with these two ladies to see what they both have uh, done together, joining forces to, to, to push this movement forward. Thank you for joining us. Please catch us on our YouTube channel, Facebook, um, our website, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>